Hi there, my name is Endemix from Sample Tools by CR2. Thank you very much for purchasing our new sample pack, Big Room Drum Hits. And welcome to the video series that's accompanying the pack. In this video, I'm going to show you a little bit about how to use Nicky Romero's kick plugin to make those kind of distorted EDM style kick drums. What we have here is one of the loops from our progressive EDM sample pack. And also uh, the kick plugin, Nicky Romero just playing a note. Um, I haven't started editing the, um, the sound yet. Now, I'm sure you've realized in the last couple of years, the EDM scene, there's been this kind of trend for having uh, long decay kick drums, often distorted kick drums that are hitting the root note of the, the key. And the track is then built on this kind of droning kick drum sound. Now, the important thing about this to start with is that you need to know what key you're writing in. This is very, very important. This loop here is in G sharp. So the sample packs we produce, obviously, we give away all the uh, melodic parts as MIDI files as well. So if you were building a track, you could use this sound in G sharp and you could bring in the MIDI file and control that with another synthesizer to create a different flavor of that loop if you wanted to. And that's one of the reasons we do it. So you can build tracks that will work together musically in a coherent way. And it's the same with the kick drum. If we're going to say, right, we're going to have the kick drum filling uh, the whole bottom end of the track. and a lot of these drops in EDM tracks, that's, that's what happens. You have a kick drum and another melodic part playing together and that's it. So if that kick drum is going to be doing a lot of the heavy lifting in the low end of the track, it has to be hitting the right note. It make, it's going to make or break the track for you. It has to be hitting the right note. As a general rule of thumb, the longer the kick drum lasts, the longer the tail of it, the more important it is that it actually is tuned to the key of your track. So for example, a drum and bass track, which has a higher kick drum with less tail and less low frequency information doesn't have to be so tuned to the key of the track whereas house music when the key is the sorry the kick is the lowest element it's absolutely essential and that's why Nicky Romero kick is such a useful plugin because we can see at every point what frequency the kick drum is going to be hitting now if you don't understand about music theory I would suggest and strongly recommend that you just do a little bit of research on it just understand the basics because it will really help you when you're making music especially in this progressive EDM kind of genre the more information you have on on music and music theory and and harmony and melody and things like that the more well the easier it's going to be for you to create really interesting melodies that move people so I definitely would would do a little bit of research on it so anyway what this represents is the envelope of a kick drum, pitch envelope to be specific. So what it means is the kick drum is falling from a high frequency to a low frequency, and that's what causes the kick drum's attack. So we can change these points on here to create different types of kick drum tone. But the most important thing to start with is what note is our kick drum hitting. The most important kind of point of this envelope is these two down here. So you can see this, it, it spends the longest time in this section here. I'm going to open up a multimeter just so we can read that as well. So when we're making these kind of EDM style tracks, what we want is to make sure that the whole frequency range is represented. And what repre what's represented, what instrument's represented in the low range the most is going to be the kick drum. So that's why we have to have it hitting um, the root note of the track, in this case is G sharp. So you see, when we just, I'm just going to arrange this slightly, when we, when we see this in the meter, this column here is called the fundamental frequency. It's the loudest frequency and it tells our ear the picture, in this case the kick drum's hitting. Now this column here needs to be hitting G sharp. What tells the kick drum to hit G sharp is these two points here. So it's where it rests, basically. The kind of tail of the kick drum is going to be in G sharp. Now, for some reason, Nicky Mara's kick plugin does not allow you to go to G sharp here. So what I normally do is just place G sharp at the, oop, at the end there so I know it's uh, hitting it. And now we play this with our melodic part. So the 
drum is hitting that G-sharp note, which means that the melodic part is gelled with it. Now, let's do this wrong so you can hear what it shouldn't sound like. Let's put this to B. Now, that just makes me feel uneasy. It's like it's not, it's not resolved. It's not, it's not comfortable. It's not kind of, it's just not right. And that's because it's not hitting G-sharp, it's hitting B. Let's put it back to G, well, let's go B again and then I'll put it back to G-sharp. It's coherent, it just sits well. So I can't stress this enough. If you're making this kind of music and you want to go in for the big droney kick drum tail, you have to make sure you tune it to the key of the track. Now from here, we're working with tone. Now we've got the, the kind of bottom part sorted out. We're working with what kind of attack do we want, what kind of tone do we want for the kick. So we can change that. It's not as important that they hit the right note, but I just generally find it does seem to sound better when they do, or at least a, a note which is in the scale, like a fifth, but I don't have to worry about that too much. But I do this mainly by ear. That'll do. So we have a click area here. Now this determines the type of click sound which is laid on top of this kind of tail. So we have a whole list of different clicks that we can choose from. And we can frequency shift them or pitch them in different, um, well, up and down the range. Now, we're not trying to get so much pitch from this area as kind of noise at the beginning of the kick drum. You can think of it like the beta of the kick drum hitting the skin. This is the beta and this is the note that the skin generates. So what we're just trying to do is get something which sits well and sits well with the other melodic elements in the track. Okay, I quite like that. And we have this length parameter here. This is very important. This determines the length of the kick drum, so how long it takes to get from this point to this point, essentially. And this is great because it means we can have one kick drum for the intro. And we could build a different kick for the drop. So now we've got a nice long droney kick. We've got distortion down here. We can do this to add some extra harmonics to the sound. Now bear in mind, we don't want to distort this click too much and kind of chop it off, um, clip it too much, because that means that we're going to actually lose the transient. So what we can do is just click this button here, which means the click's going to be rooted after the distortion. Okay, there's a few other parameters on here, but those are the main ones to start with. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to choose this kick drum and I'm going to bounce it into Logic. I'm going to duplicate this track and just copy this part down. Just mute this. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to chop this audio file. So we have the attack of the kick on one channel. Better way to do this would be to do them together. So we have the attack on one and the tail on the other. So what that means is I can add extra harmonics to the tail without affecting the attack. I like to keep the attack very nice and clean, clean transient, which punches through. It's very important. Transients, dynamics, very important on the dance floor to make sure you get that kind of snap to your sounds. I'm going to come onto here and just apply a fade to all my kick drum tails. Oops. Now by having the attack and a tail on two different tracks, what I can do is I can come onto my tail and I can actually apply distortion, overdrive, filtering.
basically I can just go through and add distortion, filtering, EQ, make sure none of the frequencies jump out too much. So I can add as much processing as I want to this tail to make sure that I get all the harmonics. I can make it sound like it's really jumping out of the track. You know, it's just squeezed with all these harmonics squeezed into it. And I use filtering to make sure none of them jump out and also EQ. But I can do that with having a nice clean attack left because I don't want to apply all these plugins to the attack because what it'll do is it'll make sure that make the transient disappear, which is not what I want. So I could then apply further processing to these two sounds together to help them gel a little bit um, and unify them again as one kick sound. But basically that gives you an idea of um, how to do it. So you can see that using Nico Murray is fantastic to be able to get a kick drum which is tuned to the key of your track. Can't stress enough how important that is to get really professional sounding tracks. We get sent a lot of tracks at uh, CR, CR2HQ and that's one thing which jumps out a lot of time is the kick drum not being tuned to the key of the track and it really can make or break a mix down. Yeah, very, very important. So that's giving you some ideas on how to produce kick drums. In the next video, we're going to have a look at snare layering to make custom snare drums.